Hey guys, I got another LiPo charger here uh, for review on the channel. It's called the Eosheen Touch T100, and this is definitely a different animal from the last charger I reviewed, um, also from Eosheen, the WT50. Uh, that was a more traditional four button charger. This is um, a touchscreen charger, so you can uh, obviously see here, you can adjust all your settings and get some graphs and charging info on your screen here. So here's a quick look at what's on the box. It'll obviously charge all the same types of batteries, uh, lithium ion, nickel metal hydride, NICAD, lead acid. Uh, this is a 100 watt charger, up to 7 amps. Here are the, uh, some of the specs from the back of the box. It has a built-in power supply. 4.3 inch touchscreen. Okay, so here's everything out of the box. Got your charger, you got a Dean's 2 XT60 adapter, your power cord, your um, banana plugs here for a Dean's connector, and you got your barrel connector to alligator clips. So if you want to use a car battery, you can use this. Got your manual. And let's take a look at the charger more closely. So we've got a uh, black uh, matte plastic here on the outside. And this looks like air vents, but it, I don't think that's air vents. Got your banana plugs on the side here and your balance, um, balance ports. Got a fan port here on the side. Nothing on the back. Got your um, AC wall plug here, uh, DC barrel plug here, and a uh, temperature socket here. And this is the bottom. You got some air vents on the bottom here. Shows your um, DC input 11 to 18 volts, and AC 100 to 240 watts or 100 to 240 volts. Okay guys, so I, I got the charger plugged in and I have a, the camera zoomed in on the touchscreen so I can show you all the details of what's going on. I have a uh, 3S LiPo plugged in uh, currently and I'm going to go over all the uh, features here on the touchscreen which looks like a lot. So over here on the left here you got your time, input, output, average, and gap. And so let me um bring up the battery here. Let's see here if we hit 3S 11 volts and we'll change the charge current to, okay it's currently set to 7 amps, we want to bring that down. Let's see, uh, we'll make it 1, uh, uh, 1C so and hit start. And then so while when you charge, then all these stats come in. It shows your input voltage of 15.3 volts and your output voltage is 11.5 volts. This is your average uh, voltage per cell, 3.8485. And the gap shows you the uh, number of millivolts difference between the highest and lowest cells. It shows you time of charge, 30 seconds. You get a nice little graph here with um, things like your temperatures, how many amps are being put into the battery right now, 1.3 amps, and the current number of watts. And you can turn these on and off. So if you don't want to see that on the graph, you can turn that off. Um, the zero, turn that off. If you don't want to see the amps, you can turn that off. So this shows you a graph over time of these various values, which is kind of nice. The bottom bar here shows you a number of milliamps being put into the battery. Keeps track of that. Okay, so let me uh, stop this. And uh, we can go over some of the other functions here on the touchscreen. Okay, so over here on the left you have memory. 
This will let you save different chart settings for a quick recall later. Over in your LiPo here, you can change the type of battery you have from LiPo to um, LiFi or LED, nickel metal hydride. Under charge, you have different modes. You can do storage charge, fast charge, balance charge, discharge. This selects your number of cells, you know, three to four, five, six. I think six S is the max. Back to three. This changes your amount of current you want to put into the battery or discharge out of the battery. And here are your various settings. So when you press long press the one of these null buttons, it will ch it'll save all of the settings that you just put in here on the bottom into this this profile. And when you go back out, and if you want to recall that profile later, you hit memory, select one, and all those settings will come back. So if I want to put one, um, say a different uh, set of settings here for say a forest battery into null or the second box or the green box. Change this to 4S, and go to Settings, Save, and press and hold, and then those will be saved into Profile 2. So if I go back out, okay, so if you want to recall that um, setting, you would just go into Memory and then hold down the appropriate button for Profile 2, and it'll change it to whatever you set for Profile 2. So I'm going to go to Profile 3, where I change the uh, amp to 2.0. It'll, it'll bring that up instead. We'll go back to Profile 1. I'll go back to 3S, and it, it would, brings up 3S and 1.3 amps. So that's how you would uh, save your different profiles. Okay, so this the second one here is a LiPo, Lilo, LiFi check time. I'm not really sure what it is, and in the manual, it doesn't really explain it. So in the manual, it just calls it lithium battery detection time setting. So I'm not sure why it would take 10 minutes to detect whether or not you have a LiPo battery in there or not, but that, that apparently that's what that's for. I'm going to leave it as the default. Again, for uh, nickel metal hydrate D, peak set. I don't know what that is either. And in the manual, it pretty much just regurgitates what's on the screen and it doesn't explain what it is. So um, definitely some improvements could be used uh, in the manual to give some better explanations for some of these options. Uh, we usually don't charge nickel metal hydride batteries, so this is probably not that important to me. Same with the NICAD D-Peak. Uh, waste time for the charge discharge. This is the amount of time that uh, is paused between the charge and discharge cycle if you're if you're cycling your batteries. You can adjust your time there. Input powder input power low cutoff. So it's saying that if you um, have less than 10 volts it won't charge. Safety time. I think this is uh, how long you can leave a battery charging. Say if it's trying to balance something and the uh, the charge the, ba the battery won't balance. Um, it's just taking forever. It'll just go 300 minutes and then stop. So it just doesn't sit there charging and uh, trying to balance for infinity. Temperature cutoff set. This is a uh, temperature that you want the charger to stop charging at, and that's if you're using the um, temperature sensor on the side, and I don't have one of those, so I won't be using this. Sets the brightness of the screen. Pretty obvious. And noticing that as I reduce the brightness, the there is a humming noise coming from the charger. I don't know if you guys can hear that in the video or not. But when the brightness is all the way up, that humming sound goes all the way, so I'm going to leave it all the way up. 
This is the beeping sounds. Whether or not you want those or not, so you can turn those off or on. This is the safety capacity, so if uh, you put in more than 5,000 milliamps since you say like a, a set of batteries that are on a parallel charging board, that's the maximum you can that you can set it at. You can increase it if you want to. And then uh, hitting the back one goes back out to the main screen. Okay, so that was the uh, overview of all the features of this touchscreen charger. And I'm going to show you a comparison to what this looks like to the uh, Yushin WT50. Uh, they're fairly similar in size, uh, width and uh, depth-wise. Uh, obviously, this uh, Touch T100 has a lot more fancy features with the touchscreen and more uh, uh, features showing you what is going on with your charging in real time. And I think that having all those um, pieces of information here at a glance is really valuable. So uh, definitely thumbs up for this uh, interface. There's a couple of things uh, that were not clear in the manual, um, but they were related to things that I'm not particularly interested in uh, regarding like uh, nickel metal hydride batteries and such. If you are um, more uh, concerned about that, then uh, I would uh, recommend to Yushin that they upgrade their manual in the next revision to uh, provide more information about that. Now obviously uh, the WT50 here is going to be more traditional four button charger with a very basic interface and it's going to be a lot less uh, expensive. Um, but if you're looking for um, a charger that's going to give you more power, uh, 100 watts here versus 50 watts over here, and also 7 amps, and this is a, a 6 amp max charger, then I think that um, the additional cost for the features and the, the nice uh, touchscreen interface are definitely worth it. Anyway guys, I hope you like this quick little review of the Eoshin Touch 100. I'll have a link in the description below if you want to check it out and check out the latest pricing on it. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.